What's up guys, it's Ami, Guovtsi, and today I want to bring you a guide on the Undersea Usurper achievement, which is the meta achievement for Nazjatar. It is a very long and arduous achievement to obtain, but the reward I feel is very worth it because you get this crab mount, the Snapback Scuttler, which is a very unique mount just by being a crab. And the fact that it actually goes sideways, as a crab usually does, makes this mount really insane. So, as you can see, here is the achievement under Sea Usurper. There are many achievements to go through. There is a lot of them. Some of them are very long, very tedious. And I honestly wanted to bring out this guide a long time ago, so there will be some footage that is very old. So bear with me uh, in that regard. So without further ado, let's just knock out these achievements and I'll show you how to get each one of them. Right, let's start off with the first achievement on the list, which is called Tour of the Depths. And it is a list of objectives that you need to complete in Asjatar. So let's go through them one by one. And the first one is to complete an emissary for your allies in Asjatar, which is very simple. You will just need to wait until there is an Ancoen or Unshackled Emissary. And you just go ahead and complete that, do your four world quests in Asjatar, turn in the Emissary, and that will take off that part of the achievement. The other one is to defeat one of the world bosses in Asjatar. Again, very simple. Each week there will be a world boss in Asjatar, so go ahead and kill it and you will get this part of the achievement. Learn about the Scrinestones of Nazjatar is again a very simple achievement. Once you zone into Nazjatar, once you complete the quest line and begin your adventures in Nazjatar, you will get a quest from one of the goblins or Ankoan that will give you a Scrinestone and it will that quest will teach you how the Scrinestones work. So complete that quest and this part of the achievement will be complete. Defeat one of Ashara's champions. This is tied to the world quests in Asjatar. There are elite world quests in Asjatar that have you kill one of Ashara's champions. It's a world quest where you just kill one elite. So whenever you complete that, you will get this part of the achievement. Then you need to level an Asjatar ally to level 5. That is very simple. Once you finish your introduction to Asjatar, you will be able to daily choose one bodyguard to assist you in Asjatar, and they have uh, three daily quests that you can complete for them. And those quests will give them XP. And once you level an ally to level five, you will get this part of the achievement. And this is also tied to an even bigger achievement that you will have to complete. So you don't really need to worry about this since you will be taking care of that in another achievement. Then you need to defeat one of Mardivas's laboratory creations. So while you're doing your stuff in Asjatar, you will come across a quest item that will begin a quest that will take you to Mardivas's laboratory. It will show you how it works, what you need to do. And once you complete that quest, you will then need to defeat each and every one of Mardivas's laboratory creations, which again is part of an even bigger achievement that I will talk about later. And just by defeating one of these creations, this part will be complete, but there's an even bigger achievement where you need to defeat all of them, which I will talk about later. So that part is very simple as well. And the last thing is to find and assist Merle. And Merle is a Murloc that once you start in Nazjatar, he will be around the middle of the map. He will just be there. He will give you a quest where you need to escort him back to your camp. So once you do that, once you escort him back to your camp, this part of the achievement will be completed as well. And Merle, again, is part of another achievement that we'll talk about later on again. So doing this part of the achievement is very important because you will be needing Merle later on. So that is the first achievement, Tour of the Depths. Very simple. Just by doing things in Asjatar, you will get this achievement in no time. And considering all of the other stuff that you need to do for this whole meta achievement, you will get this achievement as a byproduct, so no real need to worry about this achievement. You will get it in due time. Next achievement on the list is called Nazja Target Eliminated. And in this achievement, you need to defeat all of all of Ashara's champions 
that are tied to world quests. So this achievement will take some time and some luck because each day you will get one or two of these elite world quests in Eschatar to defeat these rares, Ajara's champions. And you need to defeat all of them. So this will honestly take some time, but considering all the time that you will need to spend in Eschatar to get the other achievements, if you knock out those world quests every day, you will get this achievement a lot sooner than you will finish the meta achievement. So this achievement is not really that hard. If you're only missing a few, then of course you can just be on the lookout for them. You don't need to do the world quests every time. But whenever there's a world quest of a champion that you haven't defeated, make sure you go do that because who knows how long it'll take for the rare to be up again. So that is it for now. You target eliminated. Another achievement you will need to obtain is called I thought you said they be rare. And for this achievement, you need to slay all of the rares in Azjatar. And this achievement is honestly really painful to do because there is a lot of rare spawns and not all of them are easily available. Like most of them just will just spawn, you kill them, then they have like a respawn timer, they just spawn normally. But a lot of them have something special tied to them. So for example, Voice in the Deeps is available in a building by the Makrura area, for example. You will be able to see it's there, but it's hidden inside the building behind rubble and you cannot target it or attack it while the rubble is still there. So in order to summon this rare, for example, you will need to find the molting uh, from the Makrura, use that to snowboard or like skateboard on it and run run into the rubble that will break off the rubble and the voice of the deeps will become attackable. Another one, for example, is Tide Mistress Let Syndra that is summoned by clicking the five eggs. If you're ever in that area and you see one of the eggs available, that means that the other ones will be as well and you need to click on five of these eggs to summon the rare. Another annoying one, for example, is the Rockweed Shambler. That one is the worst of the worst of the worst. And the Rockweed Shambler is a rare spawn of the Rockweed mobs. So you will see a lot of them in the area, just those rares, those mobs are actually pretty nice to kill because they have uh, better loot. They can drop mana pearls, the sediments, and other interesting things. And in order to summon that rare, the Rockweed Shambler, you will just need to go around and kill every single one of these mobs, make a targeting macro to target those mobs, and kill them. And pray to God, as one of these Shamblers respawns, it spawns as the Rockweed Shambler. That one is probably the last one you're going to get because it's the hardest to get by far. And there are other rares that are difficult to summon or to get to summon. I will put a link in the description to all the rares, how to summon them. And yeah, this achievement is very painful to get. It's going to take you some time, especially with the Rocky Chambler. Next achievement is called Aqua Team Murder Force. And for this achievement, you need to level your all of your three bodyguards to level 30. So this achievement is the biggest, the longest achievement in this whole list because this achievement takes a very long time. Because whenever you start off in Asjatar, you have three bodyguards and they start at level one. So whenever you... Whenever you enter Nazjatar each day, you will be able to pick up a bodyguard to do quests with. And by doing their daily quests, they will gain one level per day. So if you just do this through the dailies, it'll take you 87 days to level them up. All of them to level 30. Because they start at level 1 and you need to give them 29 levels. So it's 29 days per bodyguard. So it's 87 days, almost 3 months. But fortunately enough, there are ways to speed this up because there are some items that give the bodyguards XP outside of just the daily quests. And these items are the ancient Reefwalker bark from the four Reefwalker rares that you can kill once per day. They have a chance to drop this Reefwalker bark that gives 100 XP 
to every single bodyguard. So that is, if you get one of these barks, that actually saves you one day. Because it gives you 100 XP for each bodyguard, and 100 XP is worth one daily quest. So if you pick up three Reefwalker barks, that gives you three levels. That gives you one level to each bodyguard, which is... That speeds up this thing by a, a lot. And there's also more items, for example, the Naga deploy deployment orders that you can either get from Merle if he's selling it, or you can get it from the arcane chests that give 150 XP to each bodyguard. That also speeds up it, that also speeds it up by a lot. And additionally, the small reef walkers, the normal reef walkers, not the rare reef walkers, have a chance to drop a a common bark that gives 20 experience to all your bodyguards. And then there are specific bodyguard items, like for example a fin that can drop from the race. That one gives, I think, 40 experience to one specific bodyguard. So I will put a list in the video of all the items that you can obtain and where you can obtain them as well as i will put a link in the description to a list of all the items that you can try and farm every day to speed up this leveling process but this is by far the worst and longest achievement this is the one that you will most likely be completing last so yeah that is pretty much it level them up to 30 It'll take you a lot of time, you have daily quests, and you have these items that you can get to speed this up. So yeah, let's move on. Next up is the achievement called Trope Tracker, and in this achievement you need to locate all of the arcane chests and glowing arcane trunks in Anschatar. So there are 20 arcane chests and 8 glowing arcane trunks scattered throughout Anschatar. And they are treasures that you can find at any time and for this achievement i would 100 percent recommend that you get handy notes and the plugin handy notes battle for azeroth i will put the links in the description because this add-on will put the location of the arcane chests and the glowing arcane trunks on your map so you can go and find them just whenever you're in Ashtar. The arcane chests are just lootable, you can just find them and loot them immediately, and the glowing arcane trunks are hidden behind minigames that you will need to complete, but it's very simple. Just get handy notes and handy notes battle for Azeroth, and you will see the locations on the map, and you can just go and get them whenever you're feeling like you want to go get them. So it's a very simple achievement of just finding them, and that's pretty much it. The next achievement is called a Fistful of Mana Pearls, and all you need to do for this achievement is collect 1,000 Prismatic Mana Pearls. So, 1,000 might sound like a lot, but the Prismatic Mana Pearls, you will get them passively every day. They are rewarded... They are rewarded from world quests, from the daily quests of your bodyguard, and you can also find them in treasures, and dropped from mobs as well. So getting a thousand, considering you need to level all your bodyguards to level 30, you will spend a lot of time in Asjatar. So this achievement, you will end up receiving it as a byproduct of just doing things in Asjatar. You will receive this achievement pretty early on. So there's really nothing to say about this achievement. There are ways to speed this up. You can farm the mana pearls, but there's really no point in doing that because there are other achievements that take a long time. And just by doing all your daily things in Nascator, you will complete these achievements. Like, no problem. You will just get it by doing things in Nascator. So don't really worry about this achievement. You will eventually get it. Up next is the achievement called Terror of the Tadpoles. And in this achievement, you need to shoo away 100 Bloodfin Tadpoles in Nascator. So to get to so to get this achievement you need to go to Bloodfin Village in Asjatar. And as you will see from the footage, there are friendly Bloodfin tadpoles all over the place. 
So all you need to do for this achievement is just click on those tadpoles that will shoot them away. And as you shoot them away, it will spawn a an unfriendly mob that will start attacking you. And you will also get a debuff where periodically they will start they will attack you. But at this point in Shadowlands, these Murlocs don't do anything to you. Like before it was pretty easy to get overwhelmed, but not really, just because they're very low HP and don't do any damage. So this achievement will take you a bit of time, like I would say 15-20 minutes of just running around Bloodfin Village and clicking on all the tadpoles. And it's 100 of them, so just go ahead and shoot the tadpoles until you get this achievement. Not really much else to say about this. So yeah, let's move on. Alright, here we go. The next achievement is called Periodic Destruction, and this is the the other achievement that takes a very long time to complete because in this achievement you need to defeat all of Mardivas's creations in his laboratory so as I mentioned in the first achievement you will unlock Mardivas's laboratory just by doing things in Azjatar you will loot a quest item that will lead you to his laboratory and that quest will show you how the laboratory works and in this achievement you will need to defeat all of the creations there is six, seven, thirteen of them, thirteen creations, and you can defeat only one creation per week per reset. So since there are thirteen of them, this achievement will take you thirteen weeks to complete. And fortunately enough, it's very simple. All you will need to do is, whenever you're in Azjatar and you're doing your quests, you're killing mobs, you will loot blue items, blue quality items. Called like, oh, I don't exactly know how they're called. I will put them in the video right now. You will see them. It's like a oceanic sediment or something, and like a watery element and a fiery element. And the oceanic sediment is the earth element. And in Mardivas's laboratory, you're able to use them to summon amalgamations. So I will put a link in the description of the combination to every single amalgamation. So whenever you're able to go to Mardivas's laboratory, you know that, for example, you're missing an arcane amalgamation. So you will be able to look up how to summon the arcane amalgamation. You will summon that one and you will be done with that one. So next week, next reset, you would come in to summon the burning amalgamation. So you can look up how to summon that one, what combination of sediments you will need to use to summon it. So, yeah, that is Periodic Destruction. A very simple achievement to get, but unfortunately enough, it's just gated by the reset. So it will take you 13 weeks to get this achievement. Next up is the achievement called Nothing to Scry About. And all you need to do is find 100 treasures using a scrying stone in Nascitar. So as I mentioned in the first achievement, you will get an introductory quest to scrying stones and how they work. So once you finish that quest, you will be rewarded with a scrying stone that you can then use to do this achievement. And the scrying stones will then start dropping from rares, from normal mobs, and from other treasures. So this achievement is going to be very simple to get. So I feel like the best place to find these treasures is in the kelp forest, where the rare soundless is. There is a lot of the treasure chests in very close proximity. So the way the scrying stones work is that they will be in your inventory. You will right click, you will right click it to use it, and that will give you a five minute buff where you're able to just run around Nasjatar and find these treasure chests. The treasure chests are hidden; you don't see where they are. But whenever you get close to one, you will get an extra action button to use the scrying stone, and that scrying stone will reveal the treasure. So as you're looting these treasures, you will periodically gain buffs. Either you will get movement speed, you can also get a buff that will show you the location of, of the treasure chest on your minimap. So that buff is really nice to get because you will know where the treasure chests are. You don't have to run around aimlessly. And these treasure chests contain mana pearls. They contain vendor trash, Merle's items that you can then use to buy stuff from him. They also can contain the Naga Deployment Orders, which is that overpowered item that gives you 150 experience to all of your bodyguards. 
and you can also summon the rare sandcastle by using these crying stones and sandcastle is part of another achievement that we'll talk about soon so this achievement is very simple to get i'm pretty sure that with one's crying stone you can get a lot of these treasures so it'll probably take you two three maybe four crying stones to loot the 100 treasures so yeah i recommend going to the kelp forest there will be footage in the background of me running around kelp forest gathering these treasures that's the best place by far to go and farm these treasures for this achievement Next up is the achievement called Merle's Secret Stash. And for this achievement, you need to obtain one of Merle's more elusive wares, which is the Crimson Tide Stallion Mount. So, first of all, to even be able to get this achievement, you will need to make sure you get the cloak. They, it can be contained in the Benthic Cloaks, so make sure you buy Benthic Cloaks until you actually receive this cloak. I will put it up right now. So you can see it. And this cloak gives you the option to see extra wares from Merle. And you will need this cloak for the mount to appear in his inventory. If you don't have the cloak, you will never see the mount in his inventory because it's, you actually need this cloak to see it. And Merle doesn't sell the mount every day. Um, every day his inventory changes. So it will take a bit of time. You will need to come back every now and then to check up his inventory. And if he does have it, then you will need one Hungry Herald Taco, which is a special item that is only sold by the vendor called Merloco, which is also located in Agitar. I will show you the location of the cave that he's located in. And this vendor is special because he's not available at all times. If you go to the cave and you see that he is in a cage, then all you need to do is go talk to him and that will trigger a gauntlet where you need to defend him from attacking Naga. And once you finish that gauntlet, he will be available to sell you his items. And he's only available for 10 minutes. So this achievement really is tied to periodically checking if Merle is selling the mount and also periodically checking if Morloco is up and available. You could, I don't know about now, probably it's going to be a lot harder now, but you can also look in the group finder if someone is kind enough to make a group where he is, where Morloco is up on their realm, and they'll make a group that you can join and see the vendor and buy it from him. But... Since Nazjizar is not current content anymore, it's going to be a lot harder. So I just recommend checking up on his cave every now and then. Just to see if he's up. And if he's up, just make sure you buy the taco. The taco remains in your inventory forever until you use it. So whenever he's up, just make sure you buy one. And to obtain the Crimson Tide Stallion, you will need a lot of items that you get from the other Merlock vendors. Whenever you free Merle and escort him back to your camp, you will come with four other or three other Merlock friends. Each of them sells different items. And I will put a link in the description for the combination of items that you need to buy and trade between the different vendors in the description. That makes it a lot easier. And once you see that mount in his inventory and you have the taco, you can then use that, that link to see what you need to buy and how you need to trade it to be able to buy the mount from him. And that, that's it. Next up is the achievement called Back to the Depths. And all you need to do is complete the summon from the depth scenario 10 times. This scenario happens every three hours in Asjatar. It happens, I will show you the location on the map right now. You will see it in the footage uh, behind me. And as I said, this scenario happens every three hours. And when I recorded this, it happened, I think, at 10 a.m. So all you need to do is try and make sure you're in Nazjatar at every full hour. So, for example, if you wake up at 8.30, make sure you go to Nazjatar at 9, see if the scenario starts. If it didn't, check up, check back at 10. If it doesn't start at 10, it'll 
probably for sure start at 11. And from there, it's every three hours. So then it's very easy to keep track of when this uh, scenario is going to happen. And all you need to do is complete it 10 times. And that's, that's all. The scenario is just kill a few mobs. And after you do that, you will need to kill a boss. And that is, that is, that's all. It's a very easy achievement to do. Next achievement is called Puzzle Performer. And for this achievement, you will need to complete all of Mordevets' puzzles. So these puzzles, you will unlock them as you're starting in Asiatar. You will unlock world quests of the puzzles. And these puzzles are either Leylocked chests or Runelocked chests. So the Leylocked chests are the one where you have the dots and lines and you need to move them around until they are, the lines are not touching each other and that will unlock it. And the Runelocked chests are the ones where you play Candy Crush. So the Leylocked chests, there is only two variants, an easy one and a hard one. So that one you will get very quickly. And then you have the rune-locked chests where you can either have purple, red, green, blue, yellow, and orange in easy, medium, and hard difficulties. So there's 27, of, 27 combinations of this world quests. So this is another achievement that's going to take a lot of time. The easy chests are the one where you only need to destroy, for example, like 15 or 18 runes. The medium ones are going to be where you're going to have like 20 something. And the hard ones are going to be where you're going to need to do like around 28, 30 or something like that, like higher numbers. It's going to be pretty intuitive once you see these quests up. It's going to be easy to judge if it's an easy, medium or hard one. You need to do them for all of these all of the color combinations and all the difficulties. So as I mentioned with the rune lock chests, there's 27 combinations. So you have like, for example, easy green, medium green, hard green, easy purple, medium purple, hard purple. So this is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of RNG. Let's say you have completed all but one, you need easy blue. <laughs> Who knows how long it'll take for Easy Blue to appear as a world quest. So this achievement could take, if you're very unlucky, it could take probably longer than the Aqua Team Murder Force, but I doubt it. I completed this achievement pretty soon, honestly. Just make sure every day you do the rune locked chest quests and you will get this achievement at some point. <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot influence when you will get this achievement. Just gated by the world quests. But yeah, that's it. The next achievement is Explore Nas Jatar. I'm pretty sure I don't need to say anything about this achievement. You can now fly in Nas Jatar. So to get this achievement, just fly around the entire zone of Nas Jatar and you will get this achievement. If you're doing your daily quests, your world quests, and other activities to complete this whole Undersea Usurper achievement, you will explore Nas Jatar at some point. So there's not much to say about this achievement. You will get it for sure. If you finish every other achievement and you're missing Explore Nas Jatar, just look at which part you're missing and just go there, explore it, and that's it. Very simple achievement. Next achievement is either the Unshackled or the Waveblade and Cohen. And for this achievement, all you need to do is earn Exalted Reputation with either the Unshackled or the Waveblade and Cohen. This achievement is very simple. You will get this achievement very quickly. Reputation goes very fast. You have all your daily quests. You have your world quests. And there are many more activities that also give reputation with the faction. But this achievement, you will get it just passively by doing other things for, for the other achievements, part of the meta achievement. So this is not really an achievement you need to worry about. You will gain Exalted at some point a lot sooner than you actually finish the whole Undersea Usurper achievement. So. There's not really much to say about this. You will get it. The next achievement is called Subaquatic Support. And to get this achievement, you need to complete 30 requisition or bounty daily quests in Nasjatar. 
So this achievement is very simple because every day you will have your bounty or acquisition quests available. There is three of them every day, so you can complete three of these quests per day. So this achievement will be completed in 10 days and you will very easily recognize these quests because they're, the name of the quest is called requisition colon something or bounty colon something. So this achievement you will get very soon enough if you focus on it in 10 days. If not, whenever you're doing these dailies, you will get it eventually. So very simple achievement to get. Next achievement is called Unfathomable. And you need to complete the Nazjatar storylines listed below called Welcome to Nazjatar. This one you will get after you complete your introductory quests to Nazjatar. So whenever you're beginning your adventures in Nazjatar, you will complete this one. The next is called Secrets in the Sea, and the last one is called Turning the Tide. And these ones will be given, these quests will be given to you by your faction leader in Nazjatar. So for the Alliance, I think it's Jaina will give you these quests. And for the Horde, it's Lorthamar. And these quests are gated by Bodyguard Experience. So whenever you finish the quest Welcome to Nazjatar from Lorthamar or Jaina, you will get a quest to, I think, get like X amount of XP with your bodyguards. And once you complete that quest, you will get the second part of the storyline. Once you finish the second part of the storyline, you will get another quest where you need to get another X amount of experience with your bodyguards. And once you finish that one, you will gain the last part of the storyline quest. Complete that and you will receive this achievement. So it is a very simple achievement. You for sure want to do the storyline because it gives a lot of experience and mana pearls. So that's pretty much it for Unfathomable. All right, this is the last achievement from the whole meta achievement called Feline Figures Found. And for this achievement, you need to find all of the 10 crystalline cat figurines scattered across Nazjatar. So this achievement, again, I implore you to download Handy Notes and Handy Notes Battle for Azeroth plugin. This will put the location of all the Feline figurines on your map and on your minimap. It also shows you the location of the entrance of the caves where they're located in, because all of these cats are located in caves. And the add-on is smart enough to show you, to also show you where the entrance to each cave is. Because sometimes it can get confusing in the zone. You see it's like right where you are, but there's nothing there. It's probably in a cave. Where's the cave entrance? The Adam will tell you. So get this Adam for sure. Link is in the description. And all you need to do is just fly around, find them, click on them, and you will get this achievement. Just pick a time where you want to gather all of them. And that is it. And okay, this is it for the Undersea Usurper Achievement Guides. I hope it wasn't too much information. There is a lot of achievements tied to this meta achievement. It takes a lot of time and I, ooh, I almost fell down. But the crab mount is really, really insane. Just look at it. It has a really great mount special and it just burrows underground, like no matter where you are, like you're in straight up concrete. And the crab just burrows through, doesn't care. It runs sideways. So I know this achievement might look very daunting, very challenging, but if you take it piece by piece, honestly, right now with our Shadowlands damage and our scaling, if you take 30 minutes per day of doing your daily quests in Nazjatar to level up your bodyguards and maybe just do that, Maybe you just take it slow, you just do it piece by piece. You will get this achievement at some point. And it's all about starting the achievement. You just need to start at some point. If you start now, in three, four months, you will be grateful that you actually did. Because at some point, maybe you will stop playing the game. You will come back to it and you will see that you're missing just a few achievements. Or that you need a little bit more experience in Aqua Team Murder Force. But if you would have never started, you'd be starting from scratch. 
So just make sure you start. Take it slow. Take maybe 30 minutes per day of just doing your things in Azjatar. And eventually you will get this achievement and you will be so happy that you did. Because this mount is actually amazing. So I'm really sorry that the video was so long. But it's a lot of achievements and a lot to go through. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it will help you. And the next video I will do is the achievement of Mechagon. The Mechadon achievement which rewards the Mecha Cycle Model W. Which is also a very nice mount to get. Also a very painful achievement to get. But I'm sure that you will want this achievement at some point. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.